What's goody warriors? Are we back in there? We back! Like we never left. <sighs> Give me a moment. I just need a moment. I'm so happy. The movie is everything I wanted it and needed it to be. I'm so happy. I didn't think it could get... It's actually better than I thought it was going to be. And I thought it was going to be excellent. When I heard the bad reviews, it did kind of deflate me a little bit. But I was still on a, a very, very big high for the movie. A, a high that I didn't think they could surpass. And they did. Coming into the film, I was looking at the film as this has got to be an 8 out of 10 movie. I came out of the movie saying this is a 9 out of 10 movie. The film is fucking amazing. The first thing that actually sprung to my mind after the movie finished was how godlike the movie was. The second thing that popped to my mind was what the fuck are the, these critics talking about? What the fuck are they talking about? There's no way this film is shit. There's no way this is not a godlike movie. There's no way. The movie's way too good. Way too good. These guys are shitheads, man. They know what the fuck they're talking about, man. Fuck off. That's the thing that popped into my brain. The other, the other thing that popped into my brain. So let's talk about the characters in the movie. First of all, let's talk about... We had Deadshot. Harlequin. El Diablo. Rick Flagg. Katana. Killer Croc. Amanda Waller. Enchantress. Slipknot. <laughs> no comment. Um... We had another character. Captain Boomerang. Captain Boomerang. And then you had um, flash um, shots, like characters that had like maybe like a little cameo appearances, which was Batman and the Flash. And essentially, the story is, following Superman vs. Batman, the government realises that there are superhumans among us, metahumans. We must address this issue. Amanda Waller, who's one of the most feared, she is one of the most dangerous people in the entire DC Universe, top three. They show why. She can fuck anybody up. Don't give her time, space and resources. That's not what you give to astronauts. You give that to Amanda Waller, you're finished. It doesn't matter who you are. Be you be Superman, Flash, Batman or the Enchantress, she will fuck you. Yeah, okay. So, she comes up with an idea to create a task force. Task Force X. Suicide Squad. Comprised of the baddest, evilest, dirtiest villains in the DC Universe. And make these guys work for their favour. They say, let them do good. Good being from a matter of perspective. Because what is good for one people is not good for another. Um, looking on my computer or my phone just to see what I'm doing to the government may seem good. To me, it seems like fucking bullshit. Don't fuck with me. So good or bad depends on perspective. So she creates a task force to in case another threat like Zod comes down. Or the next Superman is a bad Superman. Essentially. They have a character on the team called the Enchantress. Amanda Waller is controlling this character. Because she has her heart. The heart of the Enchantress is not in her body. Yeah. It's separate from her body. They say the only way to kill the Enchantress is to, de is to destroy her heart. Amanda Waller has Enchantress's heart. So she said, you're going to do as I say. If you don't, I'm going to fuck your shit up. I'm going to crush this heart and you're going to die. That's basically how she controls the Enchantress. One of, like, easily the godlike level power in the movie. Godlike power. Free. Right? Um, and she actually turns, the Enchantress actually turns out to be the main villain of the movie. And she was fucking powerful, this godlike, because I never saw that coming. I never knew that she was going to be the main power, the main villain. They hid that from all the trailers and from all the interviews and everything like that. Well done. So essentially, 
the enchantress manages to escape Amanda Waller, free her brother, who's equally as godlike. He's more of a titan powerhouse than she is more powers. And she can just change shit and do shit. Where he's just like, make fucking tentacles and destroy shit and dissolve shit and overwhelm with um, unrelenting force and overwhelming power, right, type of a character, right. Main mission for the actual Suicide Squad is actually to save Amanda Waller because she tried to get rid of all the information that she caused a catastrophe that the Enchantress causes when her brother just takes over um, the city that they're in. I think it's called Mid City or something like that. Uh, yeah, and then the Suicide Squad decide to fight the Enchantress and finish her. Pretty much that's the story. Then you have overarching elements like the Joker, where essentially Amanda Waller has got his woman, Harlequin. And Joker is essentially, don't fuck with my woman, that's my woman. Only I can fuck her shit up. Only I can fuck her, and only I can fuck her up. You don't get to do that. Give me back my woman. Don't fuck with me. That is Joker in this movie. Because he's a fucking gangster. He is a fucking gangster in this movie. Like he is... Um, what is his name again? Scarface. I think it's... Is it Tony Montana? Or George, um, Joe Montana? Rick Montana? Something like that. He's a Montana. I know that. El Pacino's character in Scarface. Yeah. Push it to the limit. Yeah. He is that level gangster. Weapons. He's more of a dangerous fucking menace, a nutter that was fucking murderous, psychopathic killer in this movie, more than a intelligent, psychologically twisted, evil genius. In this movie, the Joker is, I will fuck your shit up if you get my way, like, I will just kill you. I don't care about your information, I don't care what you give me, I don't care what resources you can give me, I've got godlike resources. Get in my way, and I'll fucking kill you. Like that, he doesn't give a shit. That is this Joker. His swag level was on a level 10. Level 10 swag. The best character in the whole movie was Harlequin. She was, ab she was fantastic. Her delivery of her lines, all her scenes, the way she fought, the way she looked, the way she interacted with every single character, the fact that she was Harlequin, and they even she even they even had the Harlequin outfit with the black and red. Sick. And she said, "Mr. J." She said, "Mr. J." <sighs> Amazing. Deadshot, like the scene with Deadshot, when they basically said, "We want to see how good you are in it. We heard you never miss." And they put all these guns in front of Deadshot. That bit scene gave me jokes because I knew that if he give, if they give him a gun, he's gonna shoot the guard. That he swore that guard, I'm gonna fucking shoot you. The next opportunity I get, I'm gonna kill you. And what do you do? You pick up a gun and point it at the guy. I knew that was gonna happen. I fucking knew it was gonna happen. That gave me unlimited jokes, right? But then there was like five um targets and a table full of guns, yeah? Deadshot, five targets, right? He unloaded every single clip of every single machine gun, semi-automatic, SMG, AK, Magnum, everything, automatic rifle, Luger, everything, into those five targets. And he left only five holes. Figure it out. Figure it out. If you see it, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, five targets. He unloaded at least 10,000 rounds. Yeah. And there was only five holes. Godlike. Stop. Stop. He was ridiculous. Will Smith's dead shot was ridiculous. He had good... His dialogue was ridiculous. I don't even know if he had lines in that movie. I, had, I kind of had the feeling like... They... Gave him a rough outline of what his lines were. And he said, if you want to change it, you're free to do so. That's how I felt Will Smith's character Deadshot was. Because his 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 script was a little too good. It was a little too good. Yeah, he's the main character, but nobody probably writes that that nobody writes that good. Nobody's got that good a 
writing for a character and a man playing a character where it's just too natural. Speaking of natural, the best scene in that entire film was the bit where all the Suicide Squad members executed the Enchantress and Amanda Waller, Slipknot. Those characters just were in a bar and they were just talking and it was fantastic because it was so natural. There was no action. They actually, the tone changed the second they went into the bar actually. The tone changed from crazy to just fucking people talking. Just, you know we're fucked up in it. Like this whole situation is fucked up. No matter what happens, we lose. If we beat that main boss, we're fucked. If we lose, we're definitely fucked because we're dead. We're the scapegoats. We're the patsies. We're nothing. We don't mean anything. We're garbage to these people. We don't mean shit. The world has given us the world has given us nothing. All it does is take from us. We owe the world nothing. But we still gotta save it or else we die. We're fucked. We're fucked. And even when we do, they're gonna throw us back in prison. And they actually do throw them back in prison. Like at the end of the film, they get no wood. They get nothing. I mean, they do get like little rewards. Like, everyone says, what do you want? Amanda Waller, um, Amanda Waller asks them what they want. Harley Quinn says, I want a coffee machine. Um, Killer Croc says, I want a um, BET television. Um, you know what I mean? Like, the characters get little shit, little things, but it's still good, man. Like, the way the characters are in the movie is fantastic. It is Guardians of the Galaxy level camaraderie and the, the, you care for these characters you actually care for these characters halfway through the film you actually like these characters like the surprise that movie you will be surprised is El Diablo because I felt nothing about that character when I watched that film he was like if Harlequin and Deadshot were not so unbelievably great in that movie I would like El Diablo as the best character in that movie over Amanda Waller I would like I would like El Diablo over but I can't Harlequin, number one, Deadshot, number two, Amanda Waller, number three, and El Diablo, number four. Best characters, three, not even a comparison. I mean, essentially, Killer Croc had like maybe one scene, one one dialogue in the movie. He had like a couple dialogues, but not much, he's just like little one-liners. But the best line he said in that movie is when he said, I'm beautiful. Because Harlequin was saying, um, everybody in here is a little crazy. But we're all, some of us are beautiful. But look, that was him. Captain Boomerang said to Harlequin, on the outside, you are a fucking goddess. But inside, you are fucking ugly. Yeah, and she says, we've all got a little bit of that. Except for Killer Croc. He's ugly on the outside and on the inside. And Killer Croc was like, nah, not me. I'm beautiful. That, I was so nice, man. When he said, I'm beautiful. I was so happy, I was like, and she was like, yes you are, I was like, yes you are baby, yes you fucking are, wicked, 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 wicked movie, um, Joker was good, Harlequin was excellent, the story was good, um, the way they addressed the Batman vs Superman situation with the government creating Task Force X, um, Katana being with Rick Flag. um, you know, trying to control them. She, her sword was fucking sick. She had a sword that if she cuts you, she traps your soul inside of that sword. Um, the Joker basically being the wild card that didn't give a fuck about anything. Only thing he wanted was Harlequin back. Um, Harlequin's dream where she wanted to just be fucking normal. And, the, and, and the, her dream was to be normal with the Joker where she was a soccer mom with kids. That bit gave me unlimited jokes because... You know Joker and Harlequin, if you've read the comics here, throughout history. You know the probability of them ever being normal is zero. It is a big fat zero. So the fact that in her heart, deepest in her heart, her deepest feeling, the reality is she wants to be normal. That is fucking funny because she is nowhere near anything from remotely resembling anything normal. Suicide Squad. Thank you. DC Marvel, first of all, thank you for the invite. That's first of all. Thank you. Number two, thank you for making such a fucking fantastic movie. Go watch that movie. That movie's gonna, I dare you not to like that movie. 
It's impossible. You're going to watch that movie, but you're going to be puzzled as to what the... I think it's almost a point where it's cool to bash something. It's like WWE, Roman Reigns, where it's almost like cool to hate Roman Reigns. Yeah? It's the same thing like this. The critics want to start something because they're probably Marvel... Marvel fanboys. I love Marvel as well, but I like DC as well. I'm a comic book guy. I don't discriminate against either side, right? It's cool to bash all of the DC stuff. This is easily, there's no comparison actually, but this is the greatest DC superhero movie ever. This is what, I would say this is like top five best um, superhero movie I've ever seen. Guardians of the Galaxy, Winter Soldier, Iron Man 1, and God of the Galaxy. Those are my top. What order? I don't know. So I want to hear what you guys got to say. You know what I think? The movie's a 10 out of 10. Absolutely godlike. Deadshot and Harlequin, absolutely magical. Joker, godlike, nutter, menace character, cool swag. Can't wait to see what's going on. Secret ending, you hear Batman come in there and basically threaten the Mandal Waller and tell her if you don't cut the Suicide um, Project out, it's going to be Justice League versus Suicide Squad. That's secret ending, the bombshell. That blew my mind. Um, I want to hear what you guys got to say. Warriors, comment section, let's go. See you soon.